Hello, this is Mike Anello from Drupal Easy, and today's screencast is going to be all about getting yourself set up to test Drupal 6 to Drupal 8 migrations. Now, I've been working on the Drupal 8 Migrate and Core team for a few months, and I'm going to be helping out with the organization of the DrupalCon Austin Migrate and Core test sprint that's taking place on Friday of DrupalCon week. And I figured that this screencast might be a good way to encourage people to want to get involved. Um, because I'm basically going to show you all of the little bits and pieces that you need to have in place in order to actually test Drupal 6 to Drupal 8 migrations. Um, now, a lot of these steps uh, are really helpful to have regardless of whether or not you even want to test Drupal 6 to Drupal 8 migrations. A lot of these things are really helpful for just working with Drupal 8 effectively. So hopefully by the end of this screencast, um, you'll be able to uh, you know, go ahead and get all this stuff configured or installed and configured on your local machine and be able to start participating in uh, getting Drupal 8 ready for release. So uh, specifically, in order to test Drupal 6 to Drupal 8 migrations, let's go through these six or seven things um, one by one real quick and um, get you up to speed. So the first thing is comfort with the command line. So obviously being comfortable with the command line is something that you're going to want to be able to do in, um, just from a, a best practice standpoint, you know, working with Drupal effectively. But in order to test migrations right now, the best way to do that is actually using Drush. So um, in order to use Drush, obviously a command line tool. So you're going to want to be comfortable on the command line to start. The second thing you're going to need is uh, at least PHP 5.4, which is a requirement for running Drupal 8. Now, I'm on a Mac, and I use MAP Pro, and MAP Pro gives me the option of switching between different versions of PHP, so I'm all set. Um, if, you, if you don't use MAP Pro, a lot of the other AMP stacks provide you a way to choose the version of PHP that you're using. Um, even Acquia Dev Desktop uh, and this is actually the older version. There's a new beta version out. Um, if you go to, into the settings, into configuration, you can actually switch the PHP version right here to PHP 5.4.8. So if you have um, a, a stack that only has one version of PHP available or like, you know some flavor of PHP 5.3, go ahead and install Acquia Dev Desktop or some other AMP stack that has Acquia, or that has, I'm sorry, PHP uh, 5.4. Okay, next up, um, you need to have Git installed. So I think anybody who uh, does Drupal professionally at this point is probably already using Git. Uh, if not, you're going to want to go to the Git homepage and read about it and download it and install it. And once you have it installed, you can go to your command line and ask it, you know, am I using Git? Where's the Git executable? And it'll it'll tell you and it'll even tell you which version you're using. Um, I'm actually using a bit older version, 1.7.4.1. What does it just say? The, they're up to 1.9.2 right now, but the version I'm using is just fine, so I'm going to stick with that for now. Um, then you're going to need Drush 7, the latest version of Drush. I actually normally use Drush 5.10 on my machine, um, but once I started getting involved in Drupal 8, I actually installed Drupal, I'm sorry, Drush 7.x alongside it. Um, and I can switch back and forth between the two of them as I need to. It's actually not that bad to do. I'm not going to show you how to do that in this screencast. Um, but if you Google run two versions of Drush at the same time, you'll get plenty of results pointing you in the right direction. To install Drush 7, you're going to want to do it um, using Composer. Um, if you go to the Drush homepage on Drupal.org, it'll tell you it's moved to GitHub. If you head over to GitHub and scroll down a bit, there's actually an install update section with Composer. Um, trust me, take the extra few minutes and install Composer if you don't already have it installed and go through these steps and get it installed using Composer. It makes things so much easier. Um, as an example, if I do a which Drush, you can see I'm actually using the version of Drush that is stored um, inside my .composer directory. If I do a Drush dash dash version, it'll come back telling me I'm using 7.0 dash dev. One of the huge advantages of using Composer is um, I can do a uh, 
I go to my composer directory and just go composer update. What this will actually do is this will look at all the packages I have installed and Drush is one of those packages and it will see if there's any available updates. In this case, it's basically using Git and doing a Git pull from the um, Drush GitHub account. And if there's any new commits that are there that I don't have, it will install them automatically just using that one command. So that's pretty darn slick. Um, I would definitely uh, recommend that you uh, install, oops, that you install Drush that way. Sorry, can't type and talk at the same time. Okay, so that's Drush 7. Um, so here's all, kind of all the infrastructure stuff that we need. And then the last two things we need if we're going to test Drupal 6 to Drupal 8 migrations are obviously a Drupal 6 site and a Drupal 8 site. So for a Drupal 6 site, if you have a Drupal 6 site lying around, maybe it's a client site or um, something else, obviously don't work directly off production. Just get a copy of it. Set it up on your local machine. Um, I would actually recommend for your first few tests, um, stick with a fresh version of Drupal 6, like I have right here. Um, and just add some dummy content or, or dummy users and try migrating that first and see how that goes. Um, some of the most valuable testing that we're doing right now involves um, module, what we call module by module testing, where we're not migrating an entire site all at once. Maybe we're just migrating users or maybe we're just migrating blocks. Um, that type of focus testing is really valuable because that can uncover um, things pretty easily and lead to very um, specific uh, bugs that we can find and, and hopefully get fixed. So regardless, you want to have a Drupal 6 site up and running on your machine. Um, it doesn't actually need, even need to be up and running if you just have the database available. Um, if you have some Drupal 6 production site or clone of a production site. As long as you have the database there and the permissions are set correctly, um, that's good enough. But I, I find it easiest just to have an entire Drupal 6 site up and running so I can test very specific things. Um, and then finally, obviously, you need to have the latest version of Drupal 8. Again, I would recommend um, doing this directly from a Git clone rather than downloading like the latest alpha. Um, and all of those instructions are right here if you go to uh, the Drupal project page on drupal.org and click on version control it tells you exactly the command you need to clone it. So obviously if you do this do it this way the nice advantage of that is you can come to your site and you can do it git status and you can see we're on branch 8.x I've got a bunch of patches and stuff down here but we can do a git fetch origin phone home to drupal.org and there's no new commits since I last uh, fetched. But if we do it log, you can see that um, it's actually still Friday, May 9th today. So my, um, my copy of Drupal 8 is super, super fresh. All right, so that completes our list. There are some other little things you have to watch out for here and there. Um, a lot of pr different permission things, but those are being ironed out. Um, as we speak, so hopefully there's fewer and fewer of them, but we do have some tips down here on um, working with permissions. All right, well, I think that just about sums up this screencast. If you are going to participate in the Austin Sprint, um, it would be great if you could have all this stuff set up prior to um, arriving at the sprint or prior to sprint or, uh, the sprint day. That will make our time there that much more valuable where we can really just focus on testing and not getting everybody all set up. If you have any questions, of course, you can always hop into IRC, the pound Drupal dash migrate room. Um, I'm there pretty often as are a bunch of other people who can probably help you get set up. Um, and again, if you're not planning on showing up, um, if you can't make it to Austin or, or make the sprint, you know, by all means, if you want to get this stuff set up and, um, you know, start testing on your own, that's absolutely awesome. And, you know, find us in Pound Drupal Migrate and we can point you in the right direction on what we're currently working on and where we need help. All right, well, that wraps up this screencast. So again, my name is Mike Anello. I'm Ultimike on Drupal.org and pretty much everywhere else. Thank you very much for watching. Bye-bye.